Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm Curl Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Grunge Brush Pack for Particle Shop. I'm using version 1.5 of Particle Shop here. Right now, I have the Particle Shop extension open. You can find that under Window, Extensions, Particle Shop, and that's really the quickest and easiest way to work with Particle Shop. Now, right now, I'm just using a single layer document. This is a stock image of a steampunk guy, and I want to use it to test out my brushes. I'm going to choose Duplicate Active Layer. There's only one layer here. And I'll go to Launch Particle Shop. And I'm going to zoom in a bit, let's say to 150%. And we'll want to select the Grunge Brush Pack over here on the right. And then below that are all the different brushes within the pack. Let's go ahead and start with Abrasive. I'm going to select White for my color. You can find your color picker over here on the left. And you can pin it to keep it from going away by clicking the pin here. Now Abrasive is kind of an interesting blender brush. It kind of adds paint and blends. You can control the count or the amount of speckles that come out of your brush using the count option here. So if you want there to be fewer, bigger speckles or smaller, finer speckles, you have control over that. Now these particular brushes are using dynamic speckle technology. So what that means is there's a lot of little dots of paint or a lot of little speckles that dance and move around and you get a lot of really interesting random patterns. These dynamic speckles are very versatile and you can do a lot of things with them. I'm going to do some undos. You can also clear all of your brush strokes by clicking on this reset button here. You can also paint with abrasive. You could select a color and you can, of course, paint different colors. It kind of blends while you're painting. You can also turn on glow for nearly all of these brushes. If you check glow, then it's going to give you this nice glowing light effect. Now, generally, this works better if you choose a darker color and then it doesn't build up to white so fast. Let's try the next brush, which is Blood Splat. We'll pick a dark red blood color, and we can tap with our pen if we're using a Wacom tablet. And the harder we press, the more Blood Splat we're gonna get. The lighter we press, the smaller the splat. If you're using a mouse, this works as well, but you may wanna adjust your brush size to get bigger, smaller splats. So I made a bigger brush, I get a bigger splat, smaller brush, smaller splat. And you can keep painting in the same place to make a bigger, denser splat. I'm going to clear that. Again, you can play with the count. If you want there to be more blood per splat, then you can get something like that. Or we can make it a smaller count, and we get a very different result. Now, if you want a little control over how these brush strokes are going to blend with your image, what you'll want to do is put down some strokes, and then click on Save. And you'll want to choose one of two options, Merge Brush Strokes with Source Content, or Save Only Brush Strokes. We want to save only the brush strokes. We'll click on OK. Now those brush strokes are on a separate layer, and we can of course take that layer and move it around. We could transform it in different ways, and we can also change the blend mode to something like multiply, and that helps it blend with the background rather than cover it up. If you're not happy with the color, you can also very easily change the color by adding an effect and choosing color overlay, and you could choose an entirely different color. And if you wanna just get rid of that layer, you can simply just delete it. Let's try out some of the other brushes. Let's click on Launch Particle Shop. The next brush is Cracked. I'm going to select Black for my color. I'm going to make kind of a bigger brush. The keyboard shortcut I'm using here is Control and Alt, and I'm tapping and dragging with my pen to resize my brush on the fly. And there's kind of a magic size for this brush that works really well. I'm going to go ahead and click on Reset Tool, and it resets it to 8, and that tends to work really well. If you go too small with your brush, and you end up getting these little dots, and that still might be the effect that you want. Maybe you want these dots to build up as cracks. Maybe you want a really big brush, and you want really big branchy effects like this. It's all up to you, but if you want the default setting for any brush, you can always click on Reset Tool. You can also use lighter pressure to get thinner, more transparent little root shapes here, or crack shapes, or you can press hard to get big, thick ones that build up. And of course, you can use other colors if you wanted to create kind of a vine effect. Let's take a look at another way we can use these brushes. Maybe we want to fill in this text that says grunge with a grungy background for each letter. Let's take a look at how to do that. I've created a layer of text here, regular text layer. We'll need to convert that text layer into a regular layer by right clicking on it and then choosing rasterize type. And then with duplicate active layer selected in particle shop, we'll choose launch particle shop. And then we can simply just choose some brushes and paint over this area. So I'm going to choose kind of a green, and a creepy brush. Creepy gives you some interesting creepy little patterns. If I paint over here, you can see it's almost like moss or something like that. Let's pick a few different colors here so this stands out. 
We can use bigger and smaller brushes if you like. Just want to cover that G as best we can. Let's select another brush. Let's select dots. Dots is an interesting brush. It creates these dots. You get smaller dots if you use a smaller brush. You can also just tap with it. Now again, if you're using a mouse, you'll need to make your brush size bigger or smaller to get different size dots. Let's move on to the next brush and the next letter. I'm going to choose grainy. The grainy gives you this nice grainy kind of broken up texture. Now again, you have control over the count. So if you want a smaller, less dense green, you can do that. Or if you want a lot of green, you can turn it all the way up. Let's try hen scratch. This works well if you tap with it or draw with it. And it gives you nice little random squiggly lines. If I do a stroke here, you can see what that's doing. If I use a smaller brush, I get finer little squiggles. If I use a bigger brush, I get bigger, broader squiggles. And I can control a lot of that with my pen pressure as well. Let's move on to the next brush, which is modeled. I'm going to select some different colors here. This works really well to do little patches of different colors. Smaller brush gives you smaller patches. Bigger brush gives you bigger patches. And again, you can vary that with your pen pressure. Gives it a nice kind of moldy look. And then we'll move on to the rough brush. Rough brush gives you this nice rough texture. Smaller brush tends to work a little bit better and you want to tap with this brush. But you could also paint strokes with it as well. It works well for that, but tapping gives you these nice rough patterns. I'm tapping pretty firmly with my stylus. Once we have our letters filled in, we can go ahead and click on save. We want to save only the brush strokes. We'll click on OK. We can hold down Control, click on the grunge text, and then on that particle shop layer, we can just add a mask. And there you go. We have a nice grungy piece of text in the background. Let's explore the remaining brushes. I'm going to go back to my single layer document here, and I'm going to launch particle shop. The next brush is scribbles, and scribbles gives you these nice random scribbles. If your brush is big, you get big scribbles. If it's small, you get fine little scribbles. Depending on the size of your canvas, there's kind of a magic brush size, so you may have to experiment with this slider until you find the size that you want. Pen pressure also controls the size of the scribbles, so if you press down hard, you get kind of shorter, thicker scribbles, and if you press down light, you get thinner, smaller ones. You can select some light scribbles and kind of paint over this, and it gives it almost an aged film effect. And don't forget, you can play with the count to control the count, and that gives you kind of a more fuzzy effect here. Turn it down to zero and it goes back to doing just individual lines. The next brush we'll look at is speckles and speckles gives you some interesting little floating dots or bubbles. It also kind of blends with the background color that you're painting over. Again, smaller brush, smaller speckles, bigger brush, bigger speckles. When this is set to glow, you get some interesting light results here. If you turn off glow, it tends to be more opaque and just covers things up and you get more of a paper green texture. Again, you can control the count. So if you want a lot of dense speckles, you can do that. Or if you want just a few, you can turn it down lower. Next is Splat Blend, another blender brush. It gives you this nice splatter effect. If you press down hard, you get big splats. If you press down small, you get lighter splats. Bigger brush, bigger splats. Smaller brush, smaller splats. The next brush is Splatter. Let's pick a color here. We can just tap with this to create big splatters of color, like so. Again, we could set this to glow, and you get this nice glowing effect. We'll move on to spongy. Spongy is an interesting brush that gives you kind of a soft, spongy texture for the background, so this might work really well just to add a little bit of subtle grunge and weathering and aging to the background of something. You can very easily put that in here, like so. You can even put in some lighter areas using a light color just to help age this a little bit. And then finally, the last brush we'll look at is Tangled. Tangled is a fun glow brush. It gives you these nice, tangled, random fractal patterns here. So if you want this person to look like he has kind of an enchanted staff, you could do that. Make it kind of glowing like so. Maybe his eyes are kind of glowing too. It's really a pretty cool brush. In fact, all of these brushes in this pack are awesome. So there you go, that's a tutorial on how to use the grunge pack for Particle Shop. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Particle Shop tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.